It could be said that this is the most important 747 ever to take to the skies. But what if I told you it was this one? Would you believe me? How about this one? Would that make any sense? What if I then told you these two 747s are the same aircraft, ones that transfigured at the behest of NASA in concert with the German Aerospace Center? It's not about what it was, it's about what it became. This is Sophia. A Boeing 747, originally designed for conventional air travel, would transform to become a vessel tasked with expanding our understanding of the universe. We'll now turn to Nick Veronico, who served as a public affairs officer for Sophia for 15 years. So Sophia stands for the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. And as the name implies, it studied the uh, heavens in the infrared wavelengths. It looked at planets, comets, uh, we did astrochemistry, looked at planetary nebula. Uh, we looked at the galactic center, we studied supernovas and uh, star formation. Boeing developed the SP or special performance version of the 747 for ultra long flights modifying the design of the 747-100 by removing sections of the fuselage and heavily modifying other areas to reduce weight. It was built at a time uh, when engines were not as efficient as they are now, so the fuselage was 48 feet shorter uh, and still held the same fuel as a normal 747. So this airplane had about a 6,500 mi nautical mile range. It could fly nonstop from New York to Kuwait City or New York to Johannesburg, also uh, New York to Tehran. Shortly after it began service, Pan Am named this aircraft Clipper Lindbergh in honor of the aviator Charles Lindbergh. Lindbergh's widow Anne christened the aircraft on May 20th, 1977, the date coinciding with the 50th anniversary of the beginning of her husband's historic flight from New York to Paris. On April 30th, 1997, the University Space Research Association purchased the aircraft for use as an airborne observatory. And on October 27th of that year, NASA purchased the aircraft from them. This was the genesis of SOFIA. So we had taken the airplane, put a new pressure bulkhead in it, and then put a 17-ton telescope in it. And the telescope was 2.7 meters or 106 inches. Uh, of that, the uh, 2.5 meters uh, or 98 uh, inches was usable. Uh, that's known as the unvignetted diameter, 2.5 meters. So typically we would take off uh, in the evening fly up to 35,000 feet to burn off fuel, open the telescope cavity door, cool the telescope assembly down, and then we'd climb to 39,000 feet and start our observations. So why can't scientists just operate the telescope from the ground? So water vapor in the atmosphere blocks infrared from reaching the ground in most places on the Earth. So we were, once we were above 39,000 feet and above the water vapor in the atmosphere, we were 85 to 90 percent as effective as a space telescope. And the infrared wavelengths from about 240 microns to 600 is where all the star formation and all the interesting science happens. But we had the Hubble telescope. Why did we need SOFIA? in space, we could come home every night, refill our cryogens, go back up the next night. We could swap instruments. It took about two days to swap. We had various imaging photometers, infrared cameras, spectrometers. We had a polarimeter so we could tell the magnetic fields of our targets and did some incredible science in the 10 years that the observatory was operating. So what goes into planning a mission on SOFIA? Unlike an optical telescope where you can just slew the telescope right to your target, we would get a list of targets, then 
a month before they would start planning how that flight was going to go. Then the flight was planned down to the second. We would taxi out to the end of the runway and wait until the exact takeoff time, push the throttle forward and go. It could only look out the left side. So all of the targets had to be visible from the left side of the airplane and the flight path had to be so that everything you saw out of the left side made a big circle and we would leave Palmdale and return 10 hours later. So we weren't always looking at the same target during each flight. We might do an hour leg on one target, change course, do a different target, change course, do a different target. And while we were making that one hour leg, every two minutes, because of the movement of the Earth and the celestial object, we had to make a correction of one degree to the left to keep it within the telescope's area where it could see the target. And what's actually happening is the telescope is stable and the aircraft is moving around the telescope because the telescope was gyroscopically isolated. Then it was riding on a hydrostatic bearing, probably the largest bearing in the world, it had a 15 micron layer of oil over it, and then it was pneumatically isolated, which are the round, the black tire looking things when you're looking at the telescope from the inside. On May 21st, 2007, Eric Lindbergh rechristened the airplane Kripper Lindbergh on the 80th anniversary of the completion of his grandfather's flight. Sophia has observed the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, and has found a galaxy that is surviving the forces of black holes and continuing to birth new stars. In 2019, Sophia discovered helium hydride, a molecule that contains the first chemical bond known to have formed in our universe. And in 2020, Sophia confirmed that water is trapped in the soil on the moon's sunlit surface at a concentration of 100 to 412 parts per million. With Sophia, NASA took a direct approach to a complex problem. If there's something in the way of what you want to film, just move the camera closer. After 10 years of service, on April 28, 2022, NASA reported it was resigning the airplane as of September 30th. Its 921st and last mission was over the North Pacific Sea off the shore of California, taking off from Palmdale Provincial Air Terminal and arriving back seven hours and 57 minutes later. Sophia was flown from Palmdale, California to Davis Monson Air Force Base, Arizona on its last flight in December of 2022 and was transferred to the Pima Air and Space Museum in February of 2023, where her mirrors and telescope were removed to prepare the aircraft for display. It currently resides between Hangar 4 and Hangar 5 as a testament to her mission. A very special thanks to Nick Veronico for his contribution. Nick is not just an expert on Sophia, but a historian of many aircraft. See a link to his many books in the description below.